Welcome to our new set of Science View, where we cover the latest advances in Japanese science and technology. I'm your navigator, Tomoko Kimura, and this week's Science Watcher is Dr. Tomoko Tashiro from Aoyama Gakuin University. Hello, I'm glad to be here. Here is today's lineup. On today's Leading Edge, is Nishinoshima's eruption producing a continent? Nishinoshima erupted in 2013 and has continued to expand ever since. This island is also said to be the egg of a new continent. So how does the eruption on Nishinoshima lead to the birth of a continent? We'll get to the bottom of this puzzle. And on J-Innovators, Michelle? Our Takumi on today's episode has developed a printing sheet for inkjet printers that will enable long-term preservation for more than 100 years. Digital technology has been advancing recently in the art world, such as in paintings and photographs. However, long-term preservation of artists' creations has been difficult. The Takumi has made use of a traditional technology for a new application to address this problem. We'll introduce this Takumi who could change the world of art. But first, we'll begin with today's Science News Watch, where we introduce one of the latest topics in the world of science and technology. Dr. Tashiro. According to a report released by a research group based at Tokyo Medical and Dental University, age-related hair thinning is caused by the decrease of a certain collagen type, which is critical for the maintenance of cells that produce hair, hair follicle cells. Dr. Emi Nishimura's group at Tokyo Medical and Dental University focused on the thinning of body hair in mice along with aging and investigated that mechanism in detail. From the results of their research, they found that the stem cells that produce hair follicle cells break down the type 17 collagen, the collagen necessary to sustain these cells. Hair loss was reduced in mice that had been genetically modified to prevent type 17 collagen loss. The research group confirmed that the system for human hair functions the same way. Dr. Nishimura said that we were able to gain a greater understanding of the mechanism behind the thinning of hair due to aging. We are searching for drug candidates that can suppress the reduction of collagen and hope to reach the clinical trial stage within a few years. Since increasing this collagen suppressed age-related body hair loss in mice, it is expected that this could be used in the development of drugs to prevent the thinning of human hair. Furthermore, research on other methods using regenerative medicine is also underway in Japan. One could say there is a great possibility that the number of people worried about thinning hair may be reduced in the future. And now for the leading edge. Today we are featuring Nishinoshima, which began erupting in 2013. It's often been a topic in the news in Japan since the eruptions have caused the island to rapidly grow larger and larger. That's right. This is the first eruption on Nishinoshima in about 40 years. It's received much attention because its surface area is more than 10 times the size of the original island. Even now, the Japan Coast Guard continues to survey the island with an airplane once a month. Have a look at this. Nishinoshima is an uninhabited island that belongs to the Ogasawara Islands, lying about 1,000 kilometers south of Tokyo in the Pacific Ocean. It is separated from the inhabited island of Chichijima by 130 kilometers. Before the current eruption, the island's surface area was just 0.22 square kilometers. It was about the size of 30 football fields. In November 2013, a volcanic eruption occurred on the ocean floor directly off the south side of this island, and the appearance of new land was confirmed. Now it just erupted again. Black smoke is rising up. During the eruption, large amounts of lava continued to gush forth from the volcano. One month later, the mass had joined with Nishinoshima. From there, the lava spread out even further to the eastern and western sides and completely engulfed the old island. Observers noted that there were close to 2,400 eruptions in a single day when the eruptions were at their busiest. 
In November 2015, just two years after the eruptions began, the island's surface area had grown to 2.64 square kilometers, approximately 12 times the size of the previous island. This is an area that is about 1.3 times the size of the Principality of Monaco. A volcanic cone with a height close to 150 meters formed in the center of the island. Thereafter, according to observations by the Japan Coast Guard in February 2016, only a small amount of gas was coming out from near the crater, and eruption activity could not be confirmed. It is thought that the flow of magma, the hot molten rock that spewed from the ground, had stopped. The island has really become quite large. So what's happening here? Basically, two reasons are given as to why Nishinoshima has become so large. The first is the fact that the eruption had occurred in the same place approximately 40 years before. Nishinoshima's previous eruption was in 1973 and continued for nearly a full year. With that eruption, the island's surface area did not increase as much as the current eruption, but the lava had filled in a significant part of the seafloor at the time. The seafloor was filled in with lava? Yes. This is a topographic map of the seafloor about 100 years ago. This slightly sunken area in the topographic map is the crater, which was about 107 meters below the sea surface. And this is a topographic map after the eruption in 1973. A large amount of lava filled in the seafloor until it was approximately 40 meters below the sea surface. That means more than 60 meters were filled in. Yes. It's thought that it was easy for the volcano to grow large because the lava that came out of the recent eruption had formed an island over this part that had been filled in. Now, the other reason is the fact that the crater didn't move. But volcanic craters don't move normally, do they? They usually don't. But Nishinoshima's crater did move in the 1973 eruption. During that eruption, it first erupted on the island's eastern side. One month later, the crater moved to the south. Then three months later, it shifted significantly to the south by 200 meters. After six months, it moved to the opposite direction and ultimately ended on the north side of the location where it first erupted. I'm amazed to learn that it moved so much Normally, we don't imagine that volcanoes move around. Magma travels past known as volcanic vents, yet these could get blocked if gas and lava solidify and clump together. Also, explosions caused by magma quickly boiling the seawater could cause the volcanic vents to blow up. When this happens, the magma looks for the next weakest part of the ground and comes out from there. Therefore, Eruptions happen in many different places. This sort of phenomena often occurs in seafloor volcanoes. So did the island also expand during the 1973 eruption? At that time, it expanded to four times its original size. But after the lava hardened, it was washed away by the pounding of the waves. So the surface area became smaller. During the most recent eruption, the position of the crater didn't move much lava continued to spew from the same place, forming a volcano on land. This allowed the island to keep expanding. So do you think it will become even larger? According to the Japan Coast Guard, if it erupts again, it will become even larger. But for now, there has been a lull in activity, and we are currently watching that situation. But despite the fact that it has quieted down, this island is still the focus of researchers, isn't it? That's right. It's been said that we can actually understand how a continent is created by investigating this island's lava. The eruption in 1973 provided the opportunity to connect Nishinoshima and the mystery of continent formation. At this time, a large amount of lava that gushed out formed new land. Once the eruption started to weaken, volcanologists and geologists successfully landed on the island. They set out to conduct a valuable survey into special volcanic activity. 
The valuable rocks that they collected at Nishinoshima were housed at the Geological Museum at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. Shun Nakano, who has landed on Nishinoshima several times and participated in rock research, showed them to us. This is a rock taken from Nishinoshima 40 years ago. At first glance, it appears to be normal rock. But this rock that came from the undersea volcano of Nishinoshima is very unusual. 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean, and the remaining 30% is continental land. Actually, the components of rock in the sea and on the continents are completely different. The average type of rock on a continent is andesite, which contains a great deal of silicon dioxide, or silica. However, rock in the sea is basalt, which only contains a small amount of silica. This means one would think that Nishinoshima's rock from the undersea volcano is rock from the sea, or basalt, right? However, Nishinoshima's rocks are all andesite. This is the rock found on continents that contains a great deal of silica. If we look closely, the amounts of minerals, such as magnesium and iron, are the same as in continental rock. Why is it that andesite, which resembles that on continents, is coming out from Nishinoshima, which is separated far away from the nearest continent? This mysterious phenomenon is attracting the attention of researchers. It's becoming clear that this andesite was created by an undersea volcano 1,000 kilometers away. By understanding the origins of Nishinoshima's andesite and the formation process, I think we'll be much closer to solving other mysteries, including why continents formed on the Earth. So the fact that only andesite is coming out from an ocean volcano is a mysterious occurrence. That's right. Andesite is a rock that indicates the average composition of a continent. Because it's coming out of Nishinoshima, which is surrounded by the ocean, some people believe that an egg of a continent is being formed here. The egg of a continent? Yes. It is thought that the Earth was formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago and that it was covered by extremely hot magma. When oceans appeared, the magma cooled and hardened into basalt. Since basalt is a sea rock, this would mean that there were no continents in the beginning of the Earth then. Is that correct? Exactly. So that's why by studying how Nishinoshima's andesite formed, we may be able to understand how the continents on the Earth formed as well. And the thickness of the crust, which is a layer of rock on the Earth's surface, has a lot to do with it. The thickness of the crust? Yes. These are the thicknesses of the crust of the various islands from Tokyo to the Ogasawara Islands. The crust near Miyakejima and Aogashima is a thickness of about 30 kilometers. However, near Nishinoshima, it is approximately 15 kilometers. Nishinoshima's crust is really quite thin. What does it mean to say that the Earth's crust is thin? To say that the Earth's crust is thin means that the Earth's surface is closer to the mantle, which is the layer beneath the crust. Researchers are studying just how andesite formed there, and this is said to be the key to explaining the birth of a continent. Compared to other undersea volcanoes, the Earth's crust is thin below Nishinoshima. Another way of putting this is that the mantle has come up to a shallow area. It is thought that this is the factor behind the formation of andesite. Magma's raw material is mantle. Mantle is mostly olivine that contains little silica, and pyroxene that contains a great deal of silica, as shown in red. The red color represents silica. First, here is when the Earth's crust is thick. There is high pressure gas within the mantle. When the mantle dissolves here, olivine and pyroxene both dissolve simultaneously and become magma. This is what results in basalt. However, when the Earth's crust is thin, like at Nishinoshima, the pressure on the mantle is reduced. 
In a low pressure environment of the mantle's components, only pyroxene with high amounts of silica dissolves and becomes the raw material of magma. When this happens, olivine is newly produced. The remaining portions that contain even more silica become magma. In other words, magma made at low pressure contains more silica. This magma hardens when it cools and becomes andesite. So compared to other places, Nishinoshima has a special type of crust. Yes. While that is the case, Earth's history shows that this might not be such a special thing. It is thought that when the Earth's surface was covered with magma, just after it formed, there was only a thin crust. This is a situation just like at Nishinoshima. So andesite would have formed in the past, just as at Nishinoshima. Why did Nishinoshima become the only place where andesite is still being made? A series of undersea volcanoes lies to the north of Nishinoshima, and recently we've understood that these undersea volcanoes were also created with andesite. It is thought that this area's volcanic activity began about 50 million years ago, and surveys and research as to how andesite was made there are currently ongoing in this area overall. But how would a continent be created from Nishinoshima? I said that it was the ache of a continent, but that doesn't actually mean that Nishinoshima itself is going to turn into a continent. Just what exactly is the connection between the andesite made at Nishinoshima and a continent? The volcanoes of the Izu Islands that are close to Japan's mainland are mostly volcanoes that spew basalt like at Izu Oshima. By studying the undersea volcano's crust with seismic waves, they found that there are layers of andesite concealed in the area between the Izu Peninsula and the Mariana Islands. Moreover, the area around Izu Oshima is thicker than the area around Nishinoshima. In other words, it is thought that Nishinoshima is riding the plate movement and is producing andesite and building up the crust while slowly moving northward. As this happens, the crust overall becomes thicker and the low pressure environment that can create andesite is going away. That means that eventually Nishinoshima as well will start spewing basalt. In other words, in Izu Oshima today, we can see the shape of the future Nishinoshima. The andesite that is included in the crust will arrive to the subduction zone south of Honshu due to the movement of the plates. Since andesite is low density and lightweight compared to basalt, it will ride up over the land as it is and become part of the large land area. Also, even if it sinks down together with the ocean plate, andesite's low melting point means it will dissolve and become magma once again, returning to the surface again when there is an eruption. Even if this magma cools and hardens, it will become andesite. In other words, it is thought that the andesite created at Nishinoshima will move over a long period of time and would become a continent by joining with other land. So it's not that Nishinoshima itself grows larger and larger and forms a continent, but that andesite builds up over a long period of time and becomes part of a nearby continent. Nishinoshima is like a factory, so to speak, that is making the raw materials for a continent. Because andesite won't sink down, it will always float on the Earth's surface. And so we can say that in the future, this would become a continent. Actually, in 2015, Japan's researchers approached Nishinoshima by boat, collected rocks, and then analyzed them. Apparently, as a result of that, they've made two important discoveries. What did they find out? One point concerns the fact that they collected three types of rocks from the seafloor near Nishinoshima. Specifically, they collected andesite, basalt, and dacite, the latter of which contains even more silica than andesite. This was as predicted for Nishinoshima, and researchers think that it is reenacting the first formation of land from the distant past.
They're also collecting basalt, right? That's the second point. The fact that basalt has been collected from Nishinoshima means that even though the crust is thin, basalt is gushing out. Perhaps this is because when Nishinoshima first formed several hundreds of thousands of years before, the temperature of the mantle was different from what it is now. So Nishinoshima's eruption is the perfect place to investigate what happens during the birth of a continent then. It's still difficult for us to approach Nishinoshima, but if research continues, we might be able to learn new secrets about the birth of a continent. Tokyo's gateway to the skies, Haneda Airport. And what you're seeing up there is a work by Hiroshi Senju, a renowned Japanese painter. Isn't it beautiful? These artworks that are displayed over the departure gates were made in 2011. They're set to depict the skies and the sentiments of the travelers. we're going to see today is the paper that's used in making the piece. I'm told that there's something very special about it. Let's go find out. This is Shinbashi, a leading office district of Tokyo. Many offices of companies line the streets. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, nice to meet you. Today's Takumi or innovator is Koki Hirayama, an engineer for a chemical manufacturer. He developed the paper that was used for the art pieces at the airport. Here's a piece. Please try feeling it. It seems like an ordinary white paper, but when you touch it, it's slightly rough and at the same time, it's a little moist. Let's see what kind of characteristics it has. I took a photo of myself and compared it with ordinary photo paper. The texture and the impression are completely different. Yes, like the hair. Compared to ordinary photo paper, the one created by the Takumi makes the person stand out in a more stereoscopic way. The biggest reason behind that is the texture of the skin. It looks very real. What do you think? This paper has plaster applied on the surface. Plaster? Plaster is a material used to cover the surface of walls on a building. With time, it hardens and becomes very sturdy and waterproof. But why does a photo look realistic with plaster? At a glance, it looks flat, but in fact, the surface is very fine in texture. If you magnify the surface of the plaster paper, you can see a very distinctive unevenness to it. In fact, human skin has a similar unevenness. The unevenness on the plaster paper creates the same kind of optical reflection as the human skin, which brings out the unique reality of a person when it is printed. And this plaster paper has another point in its favor. The Takumi had exposed ordinary photo paper and the plaster paper to ultraviolet light for six months. As a result, the one printed on ordinary photo paper discolored significantly. But the color on the plaster paper did not deteriorate. Why was that? Limestone, which is the main component of plaster, is made of calcium hydroxide. The ink pigments are applied on the surface. As time passes, Calcium hydroxide reacts to the carbon dioxide and creates a clear film of calcium carbonate and hardens. This film blocks oxygen that causes color deterioration and protects the pigments. The principle of calcium hydroxide changing to calcium carbonate is the same as with frescoes. Fresco painting was popular during the Renaissance period in Italy. It used the method of applying and then drying pigments on plaster. The Last Judgment, a famous painting by Michelangelo. 
Even now, after 400 years, the vivid color has still been maintained. And the retention period of a conventional photograph was said to be 50 years. But now, with this technique, it has become 100 years. Furthermore, using that technique, Mi is taking on the challenge of a new kind of presentation. Please take a look at this. It's a painting by Van Gogh. What you see here are reproduced artworks by Van Gogh and Monet. Please try touching it. I can touch it? Go ahead. This is amazing. The brush strokes and texture have been totally reproduced. He succeeded in reproducing the brush strokes three-dimensionally. Hirayama is on his way to revolutionize the world of art with his paper and plaster. It's a true joy to a developer when you're able to make something that far exceeds your imagination. It really excites me to create something that is not for self-satisfaction, but for the joy of others. I believe that sort of feeling is what motivates me most and helps me push forward. Here's a reproduction of a painting using plaster that the Takumi developed. Please, try touching it. You know, if this was a real Van Gogh painting, I would be afraid to touch it. But being able to touch the brush strokes like this, it makes me feel closer to the artist. If such works were so durable, we could appreciate them more at home. Besides, this paper together with modern printing techniques may lead to the creation of new art forms. Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Tashiro, today we discuss the relationship between the eruption of Nishinoshima and the birth of a continent. The island's surface area rapidly increased with the latest eruption, and just that alone really captivates one's interest about what will happen. By looking again with a new perspective, it seems as if the Earth is almost like a living thing. I hope that we can clarify at least a little about the secret to the birth of a continent. Thank you, Dr. Tashiro. And that's all for this week's edition of Science View. See you next time.